All right, this is going to be a Total Divas review. I guess this is Season 2 or an extension of Season 1, but either way, Total Divas started today, and uh, what a way to kick off the, the new season uh, by having SummerSlam. It was Brie Bella versus Nikki Bella in way of Daniel Bryan versus John Cena, and overall it was a fine start to the show. you got to see how the rest of the season plays out, but they did finish strong with the last season with Natalia's wedding, and Left a lot of questions with the new uh, with the preview. Obviously, everyone's looking forward to seeing more Jared and uh, TJ confrontation. At least I am. And then uh, you know, just from the preview, there's a lot of stuff uh, that they showed a couple like a couple months ago, and even tonight that really make you want to you know see what happens. Shit really gets real on this season if you want to put it very bluntly like that. But this uh, episode started off with Eva Marie showing the Bellas and. Natalia. I think they showed this last season also. The Maxim magazine cover. And um, it was fine. You know, Bella's again a little jealous saying they're on the Spanish version and it ended up in <laughs> other countries. But, um, you know, it's clearly you're getting some heat between the two. And, uh, you know, it's it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Eva Marie is going to be the future of that company. You see how the way they're pushing her already to this day, and uh, that was in August, so kind of seeing how far she's really come. Uh, but the thing that stuck out to me, and it stuck out like that much, it was uh, Trinity in her high heels, and as she walked away, this is the whole grandma comment, her ass was boom, just took up the whole screen, it was like, have a picnic on that thing, but they quickly turned to the, uh, what's her name, Arion driving, it was the road rage scene. Now let me tell you something, I don't I haven't driven in L.A., or wherever they were, I think they were in L.A., but I have heard nothing but that, whatever happened in L.A., you hear Steve Austin's podcast, he talks all the time about how stupid drivers are if they go too slow, if they're we're just road rage, you know, 101 in that city, and uh, Arion showing her, you know, <laughs> she flipped out pretty bad, and, you know, if I was that guy, I literally would have got out and put her in a figure four and just, just like that Edge, uh, Ric Flair skit. I think Ric Flair beat the hell out of some guy last time I checked. Maybe that was a little spoof on that thing. Never know. And uh, then we had a funny scene where Eva Marie's talking to the Bellas backstage. She has her phone and she's like, oh, did you hear what the rumors are saying? And by the rumors, she did mean the dirt sheets. Saw her phone and she was reading the article that I bet some slum bag and like 32-year-old in his basement's writing. So I hear the... Uh, because Meltzer, I don't know, I've been listening to The Observer, I never heard that before. Actually, the first time I heard that story about Eva Marie and John Cena. But it was funny to see that the dirt sheets are being mentioned on a WWE program. And you had Natalia versus Trinity in a match. Natalia pissed herself, that was kind of like the, the whole story for about half the show. And I just found it funny, backstage after that match, you had Hornswoggle and John Cena just having a friendly old conversation in the back. Always weird to see two wrestlers that you don't, expect to be together, actually be together talking. And uh, Nikki talked to John about his elbow, and she asked him very politely, does it hurt? And uh, he shows his elbow, and there's like, boom, just added tennis ball right on top. He's like, what do you think? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, well, there's your answer. It's kind of a stupid question. Tells her that if, you know, well, that actually happened after. They went to the red carpet, and then Cena got a phone call. He had to leave. And... That's uh, kind of led up to Nikki asking, you know, what happened, and he said he got a call from the doctor saying that the elbow's bad and this is fluid and it's because this whole part's uh, dislocated or torn, and he could be out for at least six months. Fast forward, you know, just recently, he was only, <laughs> only out for two, and Nikki was very gracious and says, Cena, if he's gone, can leave the company because he is not in sight. He's gone, and he can just be forgotten about. I think that was her little exact phrase that, if Cena's not there, he will be forgotten about over time. Like, that's John Cena you're talking about. He's not just going to be forgotten about over a six months period of time. I think he was gone for eight one time, if I'm not mistaken. I just thought that quote was funny from the show. Probably the best one from the whole thing. And, um, you know, they had a couple sob stories with uh, Arion and her anger management with her mom. Didn't really pay attention. But let's talk about the big thing, the SummerSlam match where Cena finds out that six months he'll be gone, he has it all taped up, Nikki's the only one who knows about it, and they have the match, Bellas are in their own man's respective t-shirt with their mom watching, and they showed clips of the match, they showed Brian winning, 
but they did not show the cash in. They did show Cena backstage, but there was no sign of a cash in for Morton. So you know there was no like sad ending. They left Brian at the high note for once, I guess. You know, his whole his whole career, Brian gets the uh, gets the hand raised at the end and not get screwed over at the end of the day. Even on Total D 